Hey folks, Sashim the Sahib from Acyclean. Today we have Anushka with us, who is an IIM Indore student, and she held PCM plus Computer Science in the class 12. She's here with us to reenact her interview from last year, so that you guys have an idea what an actual IPM interview is like. So without any further ado, let's begin. Hi Anushka, can you please introduce yourself? Good afternoon, sir. My name is Anushka Sahu. I've completed my 12th from Amity International School, Mayur Vihar. I had physics, chemistry, maths as my main subjects, and computer science as my additional subject. Um, I currently live in Delhi, in NCR, and I'm originally from Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh. Um, my hobbies include dancing and singing. I'm a trained Kathak dancer um, from Lucknow, Gharana, and looking forward to this interview. All right, can you please tell us what your favorite subject is? Um, I would say my favorite subject is computer science. All right. Then, can you tell me what is the difference between a switch and a router? Okay. So, um, so basically, um, the one main difference between a switch and a router is that switch uh, uh, consists of devices that operate under a LAN, that is a local area network, whereas router operates devices that have that consist of LANs as well as on the other internets. Second. um a switch consists of mac addresses devices that have mac addresses whereas router operates on devices uh, having ip addresses all right talking about ip and mac addresses can you tell me what the difference between the two is okay so first of all um mac address stands for media control media access control and ip stands for internet protocol so mac address basically is um basically the devices it, it talks about the device itself it operates on the device itself whereas ip addresses talks about the network of the devices in so general can two uh, devices in the same network have the same ip address um i believe no they cannot have the same address but i'm not sure the reason why all right uh, can you tell me what the full form of http is Okay, so the full form is uh, hypertext transfer protocol. What's the difference between HTTP and HTTPS? So HTTPS stands for hypertext transfer protocol secure. So basically, in HTTPS, it's a more um, encrypted form of network than HTTP, where uh, it basically HTTPS protects the device from it uh, from its sensitive information through. Uh, it's ssl or tsl form of uh, network okay can you tell me any other internet protocols that you know of um um one i can recall right now is ftp that is file transfer protocol all right can you tell me what semiconductors are okay so semiconductors are basically the type of materials um whose conductivity lies between conductors and insulators and they are directly proportional to their conductivity is directly proportional to its temperature so as the temperature increases its conductivity increases and it is used in to make devices like um, diodes and transistors and some of its example could be silicon and germanium why is usually silicon preferred over germanium in terms of manufacturing a semiconductor okay so um the main reason is that the energy band gap in silicon is more than germanium so the energy band gap if i'm not wrong is 1.2 in uh, silicon and in germanium it's 0.7 because of which silicon is less sensitive to temperature as compared to germanium due to which it is more stable in various environments hence it is preferred more than silicon sorry more than germanium also uh, silicon is more readily available and cheaper than germanium do you have any idea as to why india is so far behind in terms of uh, you know semiconductor production um i believe that there could be multiple reasons one reason could be the financial constraints that are present um another could also be um related to uh, do you have any idea of the semiconductor shortage that happened during covid um no i'm not sure about that no worries uh can you tell me what the difference is between text a text file and a binary file okay so one difference is that text files are stored um, 
text files are stored in the format .txt and um, I can't recall the format in which binaries files are stored. And another difference is that uh, we can display and uh, uh, we can display text files, whereas binary files cannot be displayed. Also, text files are um, the the data in text files is presented in the form of text in form of characters and numbers, whereas in binary files the data is present in the form of values of zero and one. All right. So you seem to be knowledgeable about computer science. You mentioned that being, you know, one of your favorite subjects. Then why not do a degree and a specialization in just that? Why go for a degree like IPM? Okay, I do agree that um, computer science was always something that I that I had my interest on. But from the starting, even in school, uh, managing, you know, uh, organizing events and managing committees that was something that I always loved. And management always, uh, I am in Lord has that. And it also involves some skills that might not be there in coding. So that was one of the reasons why I did not choose to go for computer science and went for management instead. Okay, what happens to the focal length of a lens when it is immersed in water and why? Um, so the focal length of a lens increases and the reason for that is so basically the difference in the refractive index of lens and water is less than the difference in the refractive index of lens than it is and air. So it gets reduced due to which the focal length increases. Okay, what is titration? So titration is basically a process where we check the concentration of an unknown solution through a concentration of a known solution. So suppose we have two solutions and we know the concentration of one. Usually we use an acid and a base. So we can um, use indicators like phenolphthalein that can be used to um, put in in our unknown solution. And as soon as we get the baby pink color, uh, that indicates the presence and that that end point indicates the concentration. Okay, are you aware of Bohr's atomic model? Yes, I am. What are the limitations of the Bohr's atomic model? Um, so there are two effects that cannot be explained in Bohr's model. One is Stark effect, and the another is Zeeman effect. And also, um, the Bohr model does not really explain the structure of an atomic of an atom. So there are some in its spectrum, there are some lines in its structure which cannot be explained through, through the Bohr model. Okay, why is zero factorial equal to one? Um, I'm not too sure about that. I know that it's one, but I'm not sure why it's one. Okay, draw the graph of sine x plus cos x. Okay. So first of all, we can basically simplify it to uh, one single variable that is sine x. So if we multiply and divide it by root 2. Um, so basically sine x plus cos x can be simplified to root 2 sine x plus pi by 4. Um, then draw the graph of sine square x plus cos square x. Okay. So I'm not too sure, but I think sine square x plus cos square x looks like this. Yeah. So since it's equal to 1, so it will be 1 unit above the x-axis. And also uh, regarding the previous question, I think it will look like this.
all right what is the domain and the range of tan minus 1x okay so the domain of tan inverse x is uh, real all real numbers and the range of it is um, all real numbers except the odd multiples of pi by 2 okay what is the derivative of tan x and where is it defined um the derivative of tan x is x square x and it is undefined at the values of uh, at the odd val odd values of pi by 2 all right can you tell me any phi current pairs that you like today okay so um first i read about the neat scam that has been going on for the past few weeks then i read about um the terrorist goldie brar being uh, arrested and yeah i also read about the stampede that occurred in uttar pradesh today that um, killed 121 people and even injured a lot okay, and what is gdp so gdp stands for gross domestic product and it is basically the total value of all goods and services produced in an economy all right uh since you are from gopal right yeah so can you tell me in which year did the gopal gas tragedy occur um yeah so it occurred in the year 1984 and what was the company where this happened um i'm not oh yeah so the name of the company it was a i'm not sure about the name of the company but it was a union carbide plant and also the gas that was leaked was uh, methyl isocyanate all right fair enough and what are the implications of the tragedy that occurred so many decades back you know are there any implications of that that you still see in the area today um yeah so the thing is that the gas that was leaked that day led to a lot of issues for several decades after that incident happened for example there were multiple diseases that the gen- it which led to um that ha- occurred in the bodies of all the people that were situated there and it genetically affected even the children of them so even today we see multiple um diseases and uh, i would say even some disorders that some children and some people are facing okay when well, you mentioned uh, you know that you are a uh, trained can- a kathak dancer tell us about classical dance forms in india okay so um there are multiple recognized classical dance forms in india we have kathak that originated mainly in northern india then we have bharatnatyam from tamil nadu we have satriya from assam we have manipuri from manipur then we have kathakali from kerala then kuchipudi from andhra pradesh odissi from odisha and um I'm sorry. There's one more that I cannot recall. Okay, what does the word Kathak mean? Okay, so Kathak basically a Kathak word is origin uh, Kathak is originated from the word Katha, Sanskrit word Katha, that translates to storytelling. So basically, Kathak has its fluid dance movements, expressions, and footwork that you know basically narrate stories. which are mainly from mythology okay uh where was kathak originated from what was the place um so kathak has different gharanas it was overall originated from northern india but uh it has different gharanas like lucknow gharana jaipur gharana and banarasi gharana okay what are gharanas gharanas are basically um, the origins or the lineages that have their distinctive features and culture and way of you can say it ha- they have different way of dancing and way of performing okay can you name me a few famous kathak dancers um okay so the most well known and reputed uh, kathak dancer is pandit birju maharaj um yeah that he is the one i can call right now all right fair enough i think that'd be it for this interview you have any questions for us um no i don't thank you thank you so as you guys can see i was pretty nervous during my interview but that is totally fine that is totally normal don't take too much stress about it secondly um as you also noticed that mine was very acads heavy 
also focus a lot on acads also whatever you mention in your introduction you will be asked about it i talked about bhopal wo mere se pucha tha i talked about my hobbies and i was asked a lot on kathak then also um whenever you have been whenever you have been given a question make sure that even if you don't know the full answer of it you are explaining through this through the steps that ha ye hua tha ye hua tha ye hua tha so that they know that at least you know through the steps at least you have some knowledge about it and even if you are not an economics suppose i was not an economics student but still i was asked about the basic terminologies of it for example what is inflation what is gdp so make sure that you know you have at least full knowledge on what these basic terms are even if you don't have that subject so i think that would be it thank you all the best ready to ace ipm get started by going on aceipm.com and over there you'll see a free counseling button you need to click on that and enter all your details so that one of your future seniors can get in touch with you and clarify all your queries about IPM and ASIPM thank you